very high energy. It, it's kind of interesting. I don't know, maybe it's a California vibe. I hope it's the same across the nation. Everybody's gonna know the words. Everybody's gonna know the song. Through my discovery process with them, I gotta find out is that hip hop that they're dancing to, is that EDM they're dancing to. Thanks for tuning in to another Mobile Music Thursday here on DJN TV. I'm really excited about this week's guest and the music that we're going to be talking about this week as we're focusing again on the wedding dance and mobile music for the wedding dances uh, in, in areas and around the country. And I love being able to talk to all the different talent around the country, and we like to feature the top talent on this show. Today, we get to talk to a gentleman who's been in the business for 19 years. He calls himself an everlasting experience designer which also includes DJing and music. It does. It includes a whole lot of things. We'll find out exactly what that is when we uh, when we talk to him. He's now based in Sacramento, Sacramento, California, recently made a move out of the San Jose market, now is in Sacramento, and serves all of Northern uh, California. The name of the company he owns is Spencer Weddings and Entertainment, so it's my pleasure to welcome to the show my longtime friend, Jason Spencer. Jason, thanks for being on the show. Thank you, Jason. This is going to get confusing. Jason and Jason. I know, right? So I don't know. We're going to have to pick pronouns to be able to talk to each other or something. We might have to. We'll figure it out. So tell me, Jason, Let's. Uh, uh, this is a, kind of a place that I like to begin as, as we kind of explore your style and, and how it is that you like to approach music when you're playing at an event. So when you're preparing for a wedding and you're getting ready to go in and, and uh, play your music sets for the night or however it is that you organize it, what is your general overall game plan for a particular wedding? And if you want to use a, a specific wedding as, a, as an example, that's, uh, that's terrific. But what's your game plan as far as music goes when it comes to approaching looking at your dance for the night you know i i actually don't think that far in advance i probably know at any given moment two to three songs out what i'm going for uh -huh. i'm certainly taking requests i have uh, i've worked with the bride and groom in advance to find out what they're into what their friends and family are usually into is the same thing but uh, a little bit of, of that request side of things but i never have it planned out i don't know that this full block is going to play of course, I've come in, I know what my first dance is going to be. I know what all those special dances are, sure. parents' dances and so forth. But uh, I usually just kind of read the crowd throughout the, the, the setup of the evening, if you will. So mm -hmm. during cocktails and hors d'oeuvres, during dinner, um, even during those first dances, see, have, have all the guests come up and crowded around the dance floor? Or are they still kind of mingling around at their tables? Or maybe even they've wandered back off to the bar on accident. Yeah. Um, where are they at? Does that mean I should start with an oldie maybe, or should I actually come out with a, a top 40 right away because the young crowd's right there ready to go? Uh, sure. Well, this is great. So, all those so what are some scenarios? So now, so you've got your you've got your library of music. You've got right. uh, yes, so the songs that you know that are uh, like what standard hook songs if you would the ones sure. that we know for the most part 90 90 95 percent they're probably going to hook within sure. their particular genre uh, sort of thing so you've got that set up you know that that's that's ready to go and you're looking at the crowd so give me some scenarios where you would what and what music you would play it so like let's say that uh, that your crowd has kind of want your crowd's kind of dispersed let's start there some people are outside in the bar some people are outside um the the place uh, they're outside of the the room that you're in um sure. and then and you've got uh, and then you're you're looking at starting the dance so uh where where, where do you go and how do you pr approach that with that scenario I, again, I think it's it's a little bit of who's who there. If I have a younger crowd, I'm probably just going to roll right into something that's in the top ten, just just to get them. Hey, that's on the radio. I know that song. I'm okay, coming what's a younger crowd? What's a younger crowd? Uh, as far as song or age or what? No, no, no. When you say if I have a younger crowd, I'll roll into something that's top forty current. So, uh, so maybe I have a bride and groom there. They're 21 years old, getting married. Most mm -hmm. of their friends are in that under 25 range. So pretty much those things that are in the club right now, whether it's, and this will, you know, through my discovery process with them, I'm going to find out is that hip hop that they're dancing to is that EDM they're dancing to. But I might just go ahead and roll with something that's on that top 10 list for whatever the given month or, or year is. Sure. Just something they're going to recognize right off the bat and be like, hey, I want to dance. Yeah, what and, would that, what would be a couple examples of what that would be like? Uh, oh my gosh! <laughs> now, uh, uh, well, I, I would say right now probably one of the 
bigger hooks. I don't know about where you're at, but here would certainly be something like uh, DJ Snake, Little John, Turn Down for What. I Turn mean, Down for What? Okay. Everybody knows that song. It's been all over the internet, jokes left and right, but everybody yeah, knows a, the song. And it uh, just, yeah, it's, really, it's a magnet to the dance floor. <laughs> um, coming it's really up, been strong one that, all summer, all, as well as uh, Talk Dirty. Is that still Talk a, a Dirty, really strong absolutely. song? Um, ironically, I have a couple that can't stand that song, and they told me, absolutely, do not play the song, even if somebody comes up and gives you a $500 bill. And I went, okay. <laughs> wow, $500 bill. What about what about 600 Well, and I said, well, what if I share that with you? you know, <laughs> um, yeah, what if we split yeah. it? We'll split it. Or you ask them, so bucks, 600 is half, okay. I, I just want to know where the line is. So if you heard it, I got 600 bucks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, some of the things that are coming up that I'm actually hopeful for, I, I would probably say the biggest one that just came out, what, two, a week or two ago, is the new Taylor Swift song, uh, Shake It Off. I mean, that is reminiscent for me of Outcast, Hey Ya, or mm -hmm. even Britney Spears, Toxic, something along those lines. It's very high energy, and everybody's going to know the words. Everybody's going to know the song. They're going to come out. They're going to do their thing to it. Sure, and sure. It's kind of interesting. I don't know. Maybe it's a California vibe. I hope it's the same across the nation. But here we will get grandmothers. I, a couple of years back when uh, Justin Timberlake, Sexy Back, was hot, I mm -hmm. had I had the mother of the bride tell me that was a song she had to be introduced to when we did our, our grand introductions. She came up to me flat out and said, this is the song I'm coming into. Nice. And I went, okay. So we got to dancing. It was probably my third or fourth song into dancing. Now, bear in mind, this is still, this is probably the top five hit at the time. I yeah. said, I'm just going to roll with it from the get-go. I had grandparents on the dance floor. I had parents, I, I had all ages rocking on a dance floor to a song that, if you break it down by words, is a little suggestive. It probably shouldn't be played at a wedding, but... Um, the sexy back. The sexy back, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. But it was just so... It just rolled so well onto the dance floor, and I, I just went from there. I went everywhere with it, though, from... A couple songs later, I switched over to Motown and, mm -hmm. and played a little small block of Motown with some oldies and rolled back up into 70s, 80s and, and kind of disco-y, which, which worked well again for this group. It was an all-ages group. This was not a heavy 80% is young or 80% is old. This was really... It was pretty, pretty evenly split. And that it was kind of the crowd you sometimes hope for because anything you play is going to work. Right. It's Somebody just, in the room is going to like it, it and, and want to dance to it. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so uh, so it sounds like what one of the things that you do is you really find out who's going to make up your audience there. Like, Absolutely. what how what percentage is going to be under thirty, and what percentage is going to be over forty, and what percentage is going to be over sixty, sort of thing to be able to make some uh, prepare for some programming choices in terms of what songs yes. you're going to pull out and uh, and and play. Um, one, it's a very uh, top line, I would say. I mean, it's it's in my my planning when I sit down with couples and I talk with them. I will ask them that question actually mm -hmm. is it friends is it family kind of age range where are we looking and then when i get to the event of course you can kind of tell oh, hey that guy's into to rap and hip-hop and that guy's into oldies i mean you can visually see that after you've done this long enough okay. sometimes you're off but most of the time you get it right and so i kind of take those two elements and i put it together so i have a preface going into the event and then at the actual event i can shift around if i need to Okay. And then when you play, do you play music in, in sets like genre sets or era sets? Or how do you, how do you organize your music in terms of uh, when you're, uh, when you're going to be playing, like uh, you'd start with current and then how many would you play before you'd switch? Or do you do, do you switch on every song? How does that work for you? For a long time, probably for the first 10 to 15 years of my career, that is, it's what I did. I, here's my block of 80s music. Here's my block of disco. Here's my block of Motown. Mm -hmm. And I would play anywhere from three to five songs of that style and move on to the next style. And it worked, but it didn't work great. It wasn't that explosion of energy that I wanted. Okay. And I found that I, I don't do it all the time. I still do blocks of things, particularly as we get later in the evening and maybe I have a younger crowd that's left and, and I have to stick with a certain style. But early on, I will just throw it all and, and, and get it all in there. So I might go from, and I don't know that I have a set that I can reference for you right now, but I might go from uh, that current top 40 and jump to an 80s track, to a disco track, and then back to current and just kind of bounce around with it so that 
everybody that's out there, I, I found, and again, it, it's different across the world, but I found most people will hang out with you for a song. So mm -hmm. if you're on that song that they love, and then you put the one on that they're kind of like, eh, I don't know, this is really what I want to hear. But I'll, it's got a beat. I'll dance to it a little bit. Oh, look, this next song's coming on. I really love this song. So sure. I found that I can keep those stragglers on long enough for at least, you know, two to four minutes. I can keep them out there. So if I have to, if I look at it and it's just not the right energy, I can change and get out of it quickly. But it allows me to stay with everything and, and please everyone, if you will. Yeah, sure. How much? So. Uh, so when you're when you're switching, uh, uh, kind of not really regarding the, the eras or genres, and you're kind of bouncing between between eras and and genres within the ones that you're choosing. Sure. Uh, what what criteria or what are you using to decide like kind of what to match up with the, that song? Uh, is there other is there any other criteria or is it just whatever? Uh, is it just kind of like recognition, like oh, I think they're gonna like a hip hop song. I'll just I'll go out of this country song right into a hip hop song, or you know what I mean? <laughs> I have do done you, that. Do once. you use? Uh, um, go ahead. Uh, well, it, I I don't know that I really have a criteria for that. I I think it's I've done so much prep that I I know what they're after that I can look at it and and just I just pull it. I mean, I I don't know that I I have a criteria necessarily. Well, I'm talking about like, uh, um, or are you asking me if I have a it's, it's more like what you look for, stuff. what you look for in choosing up the song, so it matches. So it not necessarily beat matching, unless it could be beat matching for you. Is it? Do you go by beat matching? Do you do go it's by energy? Beat. Do you go by like uh, instrumentation? Like I've got a strong country song with a long strong guitars in it, and so I'm going to go to something rock that also has strong guitars. Like you know, or, or is that's not not even an issue or not even a matter? I'm not fishing for you to do a specific thing. I'm just trying to understand sure, if there's sure, sure. any other criteria you follow since you don't since you're not following genre or uh or um that's uh, not to say i don't follow genre yeah. i probably still do a two to three song block most of the time uh but certainly when i want to make that transition to something else it might be a uh, key match or a key shift okay so so i do do by key uh harmonic mixing and of course, most of it is beat matching. If I can stay within a couple BPM and, and either build my speed up or come back down if they want a slower hip hop, or if I know I'm going to, in one or two songs, break out to a slow dance, then I can go, you know, where I, I can stay where I am just for another song or two. But uh, I do do tend to follow those those two elements would be the, the beat matching and, and harmonics. The beat matching and, and harmonics does does intensity play uh, a role at all in that in terms of like uh, going from like a very high intensity song to a low intensity song, or is that not really a factor? Um, it it is, but I tend to I tend to look at that more as to where I am in my evening, not so much what's going on on the dance floor. Uh, oh, I want to carry that momentum throughout the evening, of course. So I might sprinkle in some of that intensity, and then as we get closer to that final hour or half hour of time, I'm going to keep it just as high as possible. So I may save some of those higher energy songs towards the end. All right. So what would be some examples of some, some really high energy, high intensity songs? <laughs> uh, I define it a little bit differently than I think most people do. Yeah. Uh, I define it more as... What is the song that when I play it, everybody's going to scream at the top of their lungs, no matter where they are in the room, they're going to mm -hmm. run out to the dance floor, or even if they're in the corner, they're going to be belting out lyrics in the corner of the room. Sure. So being here in Northern California, probably one of the bigger ones right now for the average age of my brides and grooms would probably be California Love by Tupac. Oh, okay. That's one of those, and it's right up there even... Uh, of course, we have San Francisco Giants, so so Don't Stop Believing by Journey is another one of those, but that's kind of universal, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's just, but California Love is one of those, you put it on, you have that immediate drop at the beginning, the California Love, mm -hmm. they, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> they run right out. The, well, what's interesting <clears throat> about that is it's so, I, I hear you speaking more to the intensity of, the intensity of the reaction to exactly. the song more so than the intensity of the song itself. Because exactly. like California Love is almost kind of a bump and grind group. I mean, you can, it's faster than bump and grind. Um, and and it so up. it's, it is more danceable <laughs> in that respect, but it's not something that I would consider like a really high intensity song, but I could see how the reaction would be, you know, the intensity of it certainly could have 
a, a much more intense reaction to it. Right. So, so here again, going back to that average age of my brides and grooms, mm-hmm. that's kind of the, we were in seventh grade or even high school when this song came out and it was just the biggest, craziest thing for us. And so it throws them back. It takes that memory back for them and it ties it back to when their best man and the groom, you know, they're, that's what they did in mm-hmm. high school. And so it, it helps bring that into it. And I don't play the whole song. It's a long song. So I don't, I'm not playing the whole song. I'm mixing it into something else. That might be where I go into, uh, you know, uh, in fact, I know I did it just this past weekend. I, I went from turn down for what right into California love. I went the other way with it and it, it was just energy on top of energy. So. Sure. Yeah. Cause it was both were really, really, really popular. So how about yeah. how much, how much of each song do you, do you play? And if it varies, like what, what makes you decide whether to play a whole song or to uh, cut, cut out of it or mix into something else? I, again, I go against the grain a little bit on this. I usually will play my songs out. You will uh, play the whole song. Well, I'll play it out to, a break where I can get out of it if I'm beat mixing. So that, but I might play 75% of the song before I get to that. Mm-hmm. Um, it might be that last minute 20 that I'm actually mixing out of. So the bulk of my song is there. If I'm in a little bit more of an intense set or I can see that maybe it wasn't the right song, then uh, the joy of computers, I will jump ahead in the song to, a, a, you know, verse, verse or something and, and get towards the end of the song, get out of it quickly. But, um, when you Most say you jump time, ahead, just it. to clarify, are you jumping yeah. ahead while it's playing? I will usually double it up in another deck and and cross over with it and just. Oh, get you'll you'll it. actually mix into a later part of the song. Oh, yeah. That's brilliant. A- absolutely. It's so, you know, I don't know. It's that. Well, that's one of those things where I just had a why have I never thought of that <laughs> moment I, right now. I actually it's like, have because it's like set up you can purpose. do that. You can take. I think I'm still stuck in the days of CDs, even though I'm using a computer. That like I have my one song. I couldn't possibly put it up there in the other deck and then just bump it ahead with that. Yeah. Cause when you said you did that, I imagine like the, the, the times I haven't done it during a dance, but the times where I'm just like, chunk, and I was just like, like I'll just jump it too, to but... a, to a later part of the song, like hitting the time limit. And it's like, well, that's a train wreck. I, that's not something I want to do when I'm actually uh, performing. And so I had to like clarify that, but that's brilliant actually. <laughs> well, Jason, actually you can with the right software, which most of it can do now, you can do that on the same track if you wanted to. Uh, you just have your cue points, you know, where in the song, you know, cue point A is the beginning of a hook. Well, and knowing point where, where you're going to land, where you got that, your mouse to hit it is the, yep. is the key. I've yep. never done it well, but I haven't set myself up to having specific cue points laid out within a song, like later in a song. It's a little stressful to do it that way. That's why I usually jump <laughs> it up. <but. laughs> right. Yeah. Take it, take it the way that's going to give you like the, take the most risk out of it. So you're right. guaranteed to have the most success. Yes. Well, and I'll be honest, the way that I started that was, and I saw somebody else, I was watching another interview that you had and uh, they were talking about having uh, a lot of the remixes that have your intro and your outro beats on them now. So you have your eights or your sixteens yes. to mix in and out of songs. Mm-hmm. And so I will often use my in with uh, any of the songs that I have. I'll use that 16 in to get into the song, but maybe I know I'm going to transition to something that needs that cold ending. Yes. Um, I will actually then double up to the original song so that I'm back in the original version of the song and I don't have an outro beat anymore. So I still get my hard ending and I can jump into the next song. That's so smart. I mean, that talk about using the, 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 the leverage and the flexibility of the technology yeah. to be able to like, to shape, to do things we wouldn't physically be able to do before, just working with CD decks. Not, not on the fly like that, no. no. <laughs> we well, if you had have to know more than coming. more than two decks, I mean, if you're running like four CD decks, and then you happen to have the song on this CD and this CD and yeah. this, but who did that? <laughs> uh, not me. For some things, I did. <laughs> some things, I did that on. Right. Well, it's, yeah. Right. Yeah, in many. some cases, there'd be some some doubling up. So fascinating, really, really fascinating. <laughs> so uh, in one of the one song that uh, Dave Turnier, who I interviewed uh, last week, he uh, talked about. Um, he talked about one of the songs like right now that is like 
that is kind of like the girl anthem song that's just going crazy in Canada. So we'll see, okay. and things don't always aren't always going crazy in the same parts of the country or same parts of the world. So uh, there's a all about the bass is a song that has been going. He says has been going absolutely bananas for him. Uh, how is that song uh, working for you? I actually have not experienced that. I, I've heard in other parts of the country, even though here here in the states, I've heard that it is big, but I've, I've You never, haven't been getting the response or the requests? Not the requests. I, I have had a little bit of the response, but certainly not the requests. Not like I do with, with, uh, 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 what are some of the other, I mean, there's so many other things like latch disclosure, you know, all that stuff. Or That's talk what dirty I'm getting to me. my requests for. Uh, it was kind of like the summer, kind of the summer hit was talk dirty to me. Yeah, um, absolutely. That was yeah. uh, the kind of a new, a new hook. We'll see how long it lasts. Um, but, uh, you know, not it's everything becomes like an either. usher. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I, I don't know that I think that one will come around here still, but it, it wasn't the big one. And I don't know if it's just cause it's, it's a little bit of a different beat. Mm-hmm. So different yeah. vibe, but it, it's, well, it's still a good song. I yeah, mean, it I is. Like the song. Well, and things catch on differently in different areas. Yeah. So it's always it's, it's the thing I love about being able to inter- to go up in Canada and talk to somebody there and then talk to you in California and the next week talk to somebody in New Jersey. You know, we start to kind of get an idea of like, you know, what uh, what is working or what's looking good in, in different parts of the country and and yeah. uh, and what might also might be coming down the track like it maybe just hasn't gotten here yet right. uh, sort of thing, too. So, uh, so definitely uh, something to try. Um, Jason, I tell you, you know, whenever we do these shows, the time always goes like way, way too fast. And I know there's so much more for us to talk about. Would you please come back and do one of these shows again? No, never. Please? Never, ever. Don't make me beg. You can beg. That's okay. (laughs) Jason. I would be be more than honored to come. Awesome. Back Thank you for being on the show on this week's Mobile Music Thursday. My guest, Jason Spencer from Sacramento, California. Uh, be sure to check out the other great shows here on DJN TV. You can check out the Bill and Jason show on Monday if you just can't get enough of me and just add Bill and you've got more uh, silliness. So we've got all kinds of great guests and fun, uh, entertaining topics on uh, Mondays. And then, of course, uh, Tuesday nights with Ben Stowe. Get your tech fix. Nobody's better than Dr. Ben Stowe to be able to fill us in on what works and what doesn't work in technology to be able to be the sound the best and look the best like i know you want to for another week on mobile music thursday this is jason jones saying so long